Hello everyone, back to you in today's video, we're going to have a look at weather for in the tropical Atlantic for today's uh, video to start off with anyway. Uh, then we'll have a look at the weather next week to 10 days in the United Kingdom in some pretty cool and unsettled weather uh, next week. But we're going to begin of course with the main um, story in terms of weather at the moment which is Hurricane Irma uh, produced devastating weather through the eastern part of the Caribbean. Uh, over the past couple of days, it's now moving further into the Caribbean and will eventually head up towards Florida as we get through to the weekend. This very dramatic uh, satellite picture is one of the latest images of Hurricane Irma. Um, uh, it's just to the north of the Dominican uh, Republic. Now, that's the Dominican Republic. Republic just there, Haiti over here, of course. Um, you can see the eye of Hurricane Irma, which is still a Category 5 hurricane, which means it's producing sustained winds of over 180 miles an hour, and it's producing um, gusts of wind of over 215 uh, miles an hour with huge amounts of rain. And also, of course, with this, we're seeing tremendous storm surges as well, up to 20 feet uh, storm surges. So very severe weather currently in the Caribbean. Uh, this is the latest from the National Hurricane Centre in terms of Irma's uh, latest position and also in terms of the other hurricanes. So yesterday we did a video and we said that we got Hurricane Irma and then we also got the two storms, Katia and uh, Jose. Well, those storms have now become hurricanes as well. So let's deal with Katia first of all. That's over in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the coast of uh, Mexico. That's a Category 1 hurricane. That's Hurricane Jose as well in the central part of the tropical Atlantic. And that's a Category uh, 1 hurricane. And then, of course, we've got the main uh, the main story, which is Hurricane Irma, Category 5 hurricane. That is as strong as you can get in terms of Atlantic hurricanes. Let's uh, deal with these one by one. So this is how... Uh, we're forecast to uh, go with Katia in the coming day. So the current position of Category 1 Hurricane Katia is just there. It's forecast to move into uh, Mexico through the uh, next few days. So by uh, the start of the weekend, it's just moving into the uh, eastern coast of Mexico then. And then we head through to Sundex into the central part of Mexico, by which time it's gone uh down rapidly back to a tropical uh, depression. So as soon as it moves inland, it's going to lose its uh, energy and identity, and it will start to weaken very rapidly. Nevertheless, and obviously it's a Category 1 hurricane, so it will be producing uh, torrential amounts of rain, uh, and also uh, it will be producing some very strong winds as well uh, for that part of Mexico. Then we've got Jose. Now this one uh, is uh, getting very close actually to uh, the areas that are currently being affected by um, Irma. So the latest position of Hurricane Jose uh, is just there. Um, then we find it heading uh, eastwards. So, um, I mean, heading westwards. So we get through to Saturday. It's in this sort of position just here. Just going to come back into the eastern part of the uh, Caribbean. And we can see by that point it's a major hurricane again. So that's going to Category 3. Uh, in all probability, and then it curves northwards and just misses sort of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and uh, goes to that sort of area, but nevertheless, it's very, very close to these islands that are currently being impacted by Irma, so very likely to see at least some effects from this, probably in the form of torrential rain, and maybe some fairly strong winds as well. Of course, the exact position of um, Jose, not totally pinned down either. And then, of course, we've got the main attraction, which is uh, Hurricane Irma. So the latest position of the Category 5 Hurricane Irma is just here. It's just to the north of Dominican Republic. It's going to carry on pushing uh, westwards 
to the north of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. So that's its position uh, by uh, tomorrow afternoon. It's just heading towards Cuba at that point. It looks like it's going to give uh, Cuba a bit of a glancing blow to the north. That's going to bring a lot of heavy rain into Cuba, particularly that um, eastern part of Cuba during the uh, course of Friday. And then into the weekend, it's pushing northwards, so it's hitting Florida uh, at this point as it goes into Sunday and by uh, Monday is just here. It looks like it looks like the eye of the storm is going to run just off the east coast of Florida, but there's going to be very severe weather hitting Florida during the course of Sunday and into Monday. There'll be some very strong winds. There'll be uh, trench amounts of rain as well, and there will be a storm surge heading into Florida. By the time we get through to Tuesday, uh, Hurricane Irma is into South Carolina and sort of Georgia at that point. It'll be rapidly starting to weaken by the time we get through to the middle part of next week, but still producing some pretty severe weather there down in that southeastern part of America. Just to give you a few uh, stats about uh, um, so let's go back to here so um, we can say it is still a Category 5 hurricane. It's producing maximum sustained winds of 180 miles an hour. Gusts of wind going up to uh, 200 miles an hour plus. Uh, its central pressure is an incredible 921 millibars and uh, it's just a really severe storm continuing there with Hurricane Irma. The um, forecast from the uh, GFS looks like this. So again, this is tropicaltidbits.com. You can find a link to Tropical Tidbits on the link page. That's the current position of Hurricane Irma just to the north of the uh, Dominican Republic. Let's run through with the GFS and we carry on pushing it further into the Caribbean. So by tying it through to tomorrow, it's off the north coast of uh, Cuba, uh, just there. We carry on into the weekend, and it starts to curve northwards. There it goes, hitting Florida. By the time we get through to uh, midday on Sunday, we've got Hurricane Irma bearing down at 899 millibars on Florida. Probably still a Category 4, at the very least, uh, Hurricane at that point, we continue through the course of Sunday. You see the eye of Irma is just off the east coast of uh, Florida. They're going to be producing a real uh, blow for, uh, for Florida. And there'll be copious amounts of rain. There'll probably be storm surges as well. That carries on pushing northwards in towards Georgia and the uh, South Carolina area as we push through into Monday. There it is leaving Florida and heading northwards into the southeastern parts of uh, America. And then it carries on moving northwards and rapidly then starts to uh, lose its identity. It loses the energy from the tropical Atlantic Ocean as it pushes inland this point, it'll probably just be a tropical depression by the end of Tuesday. Um, but nevertheless, still producing huge amounts of rain, even as it pushes northwards into inland parts of uh, eastern America. At that point, we've got uh, Hurricane Jose sitting just there. And we've also got another storm that appears to be developing down there. That uh, could well be the beginning of Hurricane. I think it'll be Hurricane Lee, uh, the next one on. We continue uh, with uh, the GFS. And you'll see that Jose eventually uh, goes up to here and starts to decay, uh, decay. There's another storm developing down there. So that could be another storm or hurricane beginning to get going through the middle part of the September. Also, something developing over here towards the um, Pacific side of Mexico. That one will need keeping an eye on as well. And uh, so that uh, next storm, that finishes up just there in the Atlantic. Yet another one looks like it's developing off the coast of Africa uh, by the 22nd of September. That's a long way out, 372 hours. But it's all indicative of what is a very, very active hurricane season. Uh, Bishop was expected to be active because we've got a warm tropical Atlantic, particularly 
in the uh, Genesis area, which is off the coast of Africa, um, that area running around three to four degrees above average in terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies. So we was expected a big hurricane season, and we see the evidence of that continuing into the second half of September. No sign with these later storms, uh, this one just here, or indeed this one here. No sign at this stage that they're moving into uh, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, southern parts of America. But obviously the risk through this season will remain as long as we're getting these storms uh, developing. That's the GFS. What about the East Earth? Well, this is the latest position of Irma just there again. Uh, to the north of uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti today. By tomorrow, Hurricane Irma is sitting to the north of Cuba, giving them a real battering of uh, severe winds and uh, storm surges and heavy rain too. Then into the weekend, Irma pushes up and gives Florida a proper uh, pasting. So um, that situation at midnight on Monday where Hurricane Irma is, in, is unleashing her fury on Florida uh, at that point. Irma then carries on pushing northwards into Georgia and the Carolinas as we go from Monday into Tuesday. And then by the time it through to the middle part of next week, Irma is just there as a tropical depression but very rapidly weakening through that eastern parts of the states. That is Hurricane Jose, of course, just there getting perilously close to some of those um, eastern uh, Caribbean islands. And then we carry on, and we do actually, with the East have push Jose into, uh, look at this, GFS isn't doing this, but the East NUF is pushing Jose back into the Caribbean uh, later next week. This is going um, to uh, midnight on Sunday, the 17th of September. It's day 10, so it's a long way out, but Hurricane Jose at that point is moving into roughly the same areas that have been affected by Hurricane Irma right now. That does look quite alarming, and look how close it's getting Again, to Cuba just here, Florida just here. So rinse repeat, essentially, if the ECM is right, with um, Hurricane Jose. Not sure what the strength of that will be, but it does look pretty intense. And over here, as I say, that is Hurricane uh, Lee, I think, which is uh, forming in the tropical part of the Atlantic Ocean. So even when Irma's out of the way, it can be a lot to be keeping an eye on through the course of next week. And I suspect that will continue to be the situation, really, uh, throughout the remainder of this season, certainly till we're getting towards um, the end of October and early November, where we might start seeing things calming down. Right, so that's dealt with uh, all of the hurricanes uh, first, and now we'll get on to the UK's uh, weather. So we're looking at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for Cardiff uh, today. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're cool up an average at the moment. We're going to stay pretty cool uh, into next week as well. So that's taking us to the middle part of September just then. Uh, second half of September, this period just here, might see a bit of a recovery in the temperatures beginning to take place. I think we do have evidence of a slight warming trend into the second half of September. There are quite a few ensemble members that are going quite warm, but equally there are several that are looking quite cool. So uh, pretty uncertain, really, for middle second half of September. But I think overall we are edging towards the warmer side of things. Perhaps not lasting all that long, but edging to the warmer side of things just after mid-month. Plenty of rainfall spikes coming up as well. We are in for a very unsettled period. Spoke about this in the videos a lot lately. So there's going to be plenty of rain uh, starting really as soon as tonight and tomorrow. I mean, continuing through the weekend and into next week as well. Temperature anomalies for the next week, going from the 7th, 15th of September. They're coming out cooler than average, of, not just for the UK and Ireland, but for many Western parts of Europe. It's in the east that we have the warmth, particularly so down in the southeast of Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 7th to the 15th of September. They're coming out wetter than average, substantially so, really, for the UK. Uh, so it's going to be cooler and wetter week coming up this second week of September. This is what we've got coming up Sunday then. Deep area of low pressure out to the northwest of Scotland. That looks very autumnal at around 980 millibars. That's going to give us a spell of wet and windy weather from uh, Sunday into Monday. We find the low pressure off the east coast of Scotland. And we bring down this cool and showery 
uh, northwest wind, a slight transient ridge uh, building then into the early part of Tuesday. But look at this, more low pressure is moving in from the Atlantic. That's only going in one direction. So by turning it through to Wednesday, we're back into wet and windy conditions. This is possibly giving us some severe gales across northwestern parts of the country next Thursday, Thursday the 14th of September. That's a long way off. It's a week away, but those isobars do look quite tightly packed. We may get our own named storm uh, in the next week or so, which is very early because that doesn't normally happen until you get into October. Uh, remember, nothing like the hurricanes that are going on down in the tropics, but the UK Met Office over the past two or three years have started. Not really sure why they do it. I don't particularly agree with it, but um, nevertheless, the UK Met Office have started naming uh, deep areas of low pressure and uh, giving them storm names. And we may get one of those coming up in the next week, which is quite early in the uh, autumn to be doing that. Beyond that, we go through to the middle part of uh, September and we begin to try and build a ridge from the Azores side, but we keep the wind in from the north and the northwest. So it probably turns a bit drier into the second half next week, but that does still suggest quite cool conditions really particularly so i would have thought uh at night beyond day 10 that takes us to day 10 by the way which is certainly 17th of september beyond day 10 uh this particular run of the gfs keeps things quite unsettled especially so down in the south uh east of the earth again so early next week we're bringing in a deep autumnal area of low pressure that's giving us strong winds and heavy rain go through to showery conditions um on tuesday wednesday next week we're back to wet and windy weather main returning to that cool northwesterly wind with a lot of showers on thursday and then the ecnf is trying to build in the high pressure again from the azores high uh, through the middle part of the month. We go to day 10, which is Sunday, 17th September, and actually the uh, Eastern Earth is making a little bit more of that ridge from the Azores High than the GFS. So the uh, Eastern Earth has that high pressure just down to the southwest coast. That certainly is breaking us out of the unsettled weather, at least temporarily, and bringing us something drier. It's also probably pulling out some quite warm air from uh, the southwest as well. So that implies that the middle part of September could be fairly warm and dry with the East Indian But remember, that's not backed up by the GFS. GFS is a lot cooler and a lot more unsettled even into the second half of September. So that part of things remains pretty uncertain. In the more near, um, in more near uh, time frame, it looks like we are in for a lot of cool and unsettled weather starting really uh, essentially now going through the weekend and into next week as well second half of next week we probably uh, try and break out of that for a while anyway i suspect it will uh, still be quite cool even into the second half of next week particularly so at night but we should lose rain bands and then maybe as we get in towards that uh, following weekend and into the middle part of september we might see something a little bit drier and warmer then although very low confidence on that. All right, tomorrow it's JMA Fray, so I'll have a look at the month pair with Japanese CFSB two models. And of course, we'll probably do a video uh, for um, Hurricane Irma and all the latest in terms of the tropical storms as well. So uh, come back for those updates tomorrow. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.